Diogo Cao, anglicized as Diogo Cam and also known as Diego Cam, was a Portuguese explorer and one of the most notable navigators of the Age of Discovery. He made two voyages sailing along the west coast of Africa in the 1480s, exploring the Congo River and the coasts of the present-day Angola and Namibia. Little is known about the early life of Diogo Cao. According to tradition, he was born in Vila Real, Portugal, around the middle of the 15th century. His grandfather, Gonçalo Cao, had fought for Portuguese independence at the Battle of Aljubarota. By 1480, Cao was sailing off the coast of Africa in the service of João II. There is a record that he returned to Portugal with captured Spanish ships. Diogo Cao when the Treaty of Alcasovas confirmed Portugal's monopoly on trade and exploration along Africa's west coast, João II moved quickly to secure and expand his hold on the region. In 1481, a fleet of ten ships was dispatched to the Gold Coast to construct a fortress known as São Jorge de Mina. The fort would serve as a commercial center for trade and an important point of resupply for Portuguese voyages. João II also reinstituted a program of exploration southward along the African coast, an initiative that had been held in abeyance during the war with Spain. Diogo Cao was selected to lead João's first voyage of exploration in 1482. The padrão bearing the arms of Portugal erected by Cao at Cape Street. Mary when King John II of Portugal restarted the work of Henry the Navigator, he sent out Cao to explore the African coast south of the equator. Diogo Cao filled his ship with stone pillars surmounted by the cross of the Order of Christ and engraved with the Portuguese royal arms, with the plan to erect one in every new place he would discover. On his way, he stopped in the newly built Almina Castle to stock up. He discovered the mouth and estuary of the Congo, probably in August 1482 and marked it with a padrão, or stone pillar erected on Shark Point, attesting to the sovereignty of Portugal. This padrão still stands to this day, albeit in ruins. He also sailed up the Great River for a short distance and commenced modest commerce with the natives of the Bay Congo Kingdom. He was told that their king lived farther upriver. He sent four men to meet the king, kept four natives to serve as ambassadors of Congo and Portugal, and sailed back down the Atlantic. Cao then coasted down along present Angola and erected a second padrão, probably marking the termination of this voyage, at Cape St. Mary. The first padrão erected at the mouth of the Congo River, the S. Jorge, has been taken by an English ship that sunk, according to indigenous rumors. The second one, the street, Agostinho, still stands today, but is without its cross on top. Diogo Tsao's coat of arms he returned to Lisbon by April 8, 1484, where John II ennobled him, promoting him from Esquire to a knight of his household. And granted him an annuity and a coat of arms where two padroais are represented. The king also asked him to sail back to Congo to repatriate the four men he left behind. Stone of Ayalala, with the inscriptions of Diogo Cao that Cao, on his second voyage of 1484-1486, was accompanied by Martin Beheim is very doubtful. But it is known that the explorer revisited the Congo and erected two more padroais on land beyond his previous voyage. The first was at Cabo Negro, Angola, the second at Cape Cross. The Cape Cross pillar probably marked the end of his progress southward, some 1,400 kilometers. Diogo Cao also embarked the four indigenous ambassadors, that he had promised not to keep for more than 15 moons. Cao sailed up the Congo River, up to the neighborhood of the site of Matadi. There, in October or November 1485, near the falls of Ayalala, he left an inscription engraved on the stone which testifies of its passage and that of his men, Aqui chegaramos navios do esclarecido rei de João II de Portugal, Diogo Cao. Pero anas, pero de costa. Dot. According to one authority, Cao died off Cape Cross, but João de Barros and others wrote of his return to the Congo, and subsequent taking of a native envoy to Portugal. A report by a board of astronomers and pilots presented at a 1525 conference in Badajo clearly stated that his death happened near Sarapata. A coast map by Henricus Martellus Germanus published in 1489 indicated the location of a padrão erected by Diogo Cao and Pona dos Ferilios nearby Sarapata, with a legend at Hick Mortar. The Venetian cartographer Pietro Capo corroborated this location of death in 1520. The four pillars set up by Cao on his two voyages have all been discovered still on their original site, and the inscriptions on two of them from Cape Santa Maria and Cape Cross dated 1482 and 1485 respectively, are still to be read and have been printed. The Cape Cross Padrão was long in Berlin but was recently returned to Namibia, those 
from the Congo estuary in the more southerly Cape Santa Maria and Cabo Negro are in the Museum of the Lisbon Geographical Society. In 1951, Botanist Sexel and Mendonça named a genus of plants from western central tropical Africa in honor of him, Diagoa. In Vila Real, the Plaza Diogo Cao was named after him. In the center of the plaza, stands a bronze statue of him supported on a square granite pedestal base. In 1999, André Roberto from the French Hydrographic Office named an undersea hole located off the southern coast of Portugal the Diogo Cao Hole. In 2018, a hopper dredger called the Diogo Cow and immatriculated in Luxembourg was launched afloat. Diogo Cow is the subject of Padrao, one of the best-known poems in Fernando Pessoa's book Mensagem, the only one published during the author's lifetime. He also figures strongly in the 1996 novel Lord of the Congo by Peter Forbath. English-Portuguese. Thanks for watching.